Rollerblade, please consider making this change before taking this skate into full production. I've been skating it for the last two months and the first thing I ended up changing myself was the frames. My first issue on the frames, I had no problems with them at all. They were skating sweet, I didn't have any wheel bite. I actually even preferred how they felt on top sides. They were really fast feeling and I think that's due to this little curve shape that the frame has. It was the second session where I ran into problems. I was starting to stick on everything if I got lazy at all and I just couldn't be bothered trying to have a frame that's so hard to skate flat. That as well as when I weighed the frames, I found they added about 40% more weight to the setup. I decided I'm not gonna put up with it. I'm gonna change to the 50-50 prime frames and I've been loving them. Now that is not the thing I think Rollerblade should change about the skates. I mean, you can get the boot boot only if you really want to and I encourage you to do that if you skate flat. And also this frame will be totally fine for the majority of bladers out there who skate anti-rocker or freestyle. Even better, when you buy the skates, they come set up flat, but they have anti-rockers in the box. So you're just getting an extra set of wheels. Speaking of those wheels, Rollerblade should definitely keep these wheels and bearings for the full release. They are so good. And I'm used to skating ceramics. I've been skating the Project Go ceramics as well as the Bone Super Swiss ceramics. These seem better than those. And the wheels themselves are really high quality. I haven't seen any cracks, any chunks. They're really good. The next change I made was with the liner. I actually missed my first sole grind in the skate and that was because of the lack of forward flex and it had a lack of forward flex simply because of the lacing and the liner. I tried around with the lacing and the liner and found that I did prefer a looser lace to the point where I couldn't even feel it. And that on top with the fact that having a lace up liner means your skates take twice as long to take on and off, I decided to just take out the laces. Without the laces and the liners, the skates felt a lot more natural to me. I didn't even notice they were gone. Now do I think Rollerblade should take the laces out of the liners? No, I think they shouldn't because I think it's good to have options. There will be someone out there that likes to not have the forward flex. Now this liner is exceptionally good. It is a premium liner and by far the best liner I have. It has a lot of cushion around your ankle, but not too much around your foot, meaning it doesn't take up a lot of space in the boot. This skate is the best feeling skate I've had out of the box ever. There's something different about how your foot feels in there. It just feels like there's room for your foot. I think a lot of this comes down to the exceptionally good insole that's in this skate. The only downside I've found with the liners is they do seem exceptionally hot. I don't know why that is, they do just seem like a normal liner, but that has led to me sweating a lot and these are definitely the worst smelling liners I have right now. And I haven't had that problem with smelly liners since the Them 908. Some people say a smelly liner it means it's a good liner, but I don't know. Say what you want. <laughs> Underneath this liner is an exceptionally good shock absorber. Unlike other shock absorbers, this one sits flat in the boot. You no longer have to have a raised heel boot to protect your heels. Which is really good. The shell of these skates are made for size and a half. And if you're a whole size, you have to put this weird little thing under the liner to fill it out. And I think that makes them better for size and a half, like me. They also made a completely new cuff for the skate and they did an exceptional job there. It features some of the best buckle protection I've ever seen. You can really see how it locks the buckle in. And it feels great, it has great flicks. The 45 degree strap too, I've never been a fan of Velcro straps, but I think that's just because I haven't had a good Velcro strap until this skate. This one is such a good quality it seems like it's gonna last forever the next thing i really noticed about the skate was it is very squeaky it has one of the squeakiest cuffs in the game definitely on par with like the razor ships now before you tell me the hack about waxing the cuffs i would have done that but these are some of the hardest cuffs to get off you have to use this special tool here and i haven't been able to work it out yet i just can't do it maybe i'm dumb that's something i wouldn't get rollerblade to change either i mean it's a minor nuisance if they can fix it that's great but they don't need to fix that and besides from the squeak, these performed so well. I absolutely love skating in these. Having the cutout sole plate really works. The frame feels much closer to your foot and it's like an SL, but I would say better. It's a very responsive feeling setup that makes you really feel grinds. It is the asymmetrical shape, which I do not like at all. It's the whole reason I don't skate the them, although they have a new sole plate right now, but I haven't had the same problems that I had with the them skates. So far, touch wood, I haven't had any false locks where I've fallen out of sole grinds and stuff. That I have with the Thems. And I think that's just because this is a bigger sole plate. None of those things that I'll change. I think they've done an exceptional job. This is a very well designed skate that performs well. There's just one thing that I think they should really consider changing. I'd get them to shave some weight off, even if that means bringing back the holes in the boot that the solo skate had. These are by far the heaviest skates I've ever had. It is the first thing that people notice when I hand in them, and that is whether they have frames on or not. Now I don't notice this when I'm skating. When I'm out skating, they feel fine. In fact, they feel great. The only time I notice this is when I'm traveling to skate. Now, unlike I assume most bladers, I take a lot of public transport to go skate. So that means I'm walking with my skates or carrying them on the bus or the train. And doing that gets so tiring with these skates because it's like carrying 
two pairs of skates instead of one. Now, if you're like most rollerbladers out there and you just drive to a skate spot, I don't think you have a problem with this. Because like I said, when you're skating them, they feel fine. Even if you skate to the skate spots you skate, you won't have a problem as well. It's just if you have to carry them a lot, that's when you're going to have a problem. Now, I know a lot of people didn't like those holes, but I, for one, am a fan for it. I think they make the skate look unique. Now, don't get me wrong. This skate looks beautiful. It is an exceptionally good looking skate. But uh, I do feel like, especially to the untrained eye, this looks like every other skate on the market. And the solos before, they stood out. They looked different. The other good thing about the holes too is they can help solve the hot liner problem that I was having earlier. This is a very minor issue that won't affect most rollerblades. So rollerblade doesn't really need to make that change. But if they do want to make them a little bit better, I would encourage them to just do something to lose some of the weight. And I think these stand out above a lot of the competition out there just because of how polished they are. It's very rare you get a skate out of the box that is this quality from liner to bearing. And that's why it's very easy for me to recommend these skates if you're thinking about getting them. If you want to see these skates in action, I'll see you over in this video here on my first impressions.